educational and learning environment towards correcting the field system. Educational facilities are supposed to not only equip children in cognitive development, but also behavioral development. However, some authorities have failed in their leadership responsibility to inculcate discipline in their words. Given recent ill-fated death of Sylvester Oronomi, a plethora of complaints have been filed on social media about the negligence of schools in monitoring the activities of their words and going as far as politicizing their system in favor of the fittest. On the other end of the spectrum, parents are also being blamed for not paying much attention to their children's development process, thereby unleashing both abuser and the victim in an unchecked and unforgiving system. However, these occurrences are avoidable only if some school authorities and parents can form a synergy to put this anomaly in check to prevent future fatalities through the following. The Parents-Teacher Association is an essential part of the learning process of a child, so it must not be eliminated. Unusual behaviors from students or pupils must be duly reported and addressed. Boarding school facilities must be structured with an intent to curb bullying and unacceptable behaviors. There must be school disciplinary and correctional committee for bullies and victims. Parents should not be negligent to their children or world. If these steps are put in place, the school system will be less of a torture zone and more of a learning and development environment. Let's ponder on these words by Katkura, a world-class author and chef. Bullying is killing our kids. Being different is killing our kids. And the kids who are bullying are dying inside. We have to save our kids, whether they are bullied or they are bullying. They are all in pain. Let us save our children from the menace of bullying. Rest in peace, Sylvester Aronomy and other victims of this evil. Yeah. I don't but, yeah, know. I, I like, I like, I mean, it sounds nice when you say that um, both children are in pain. Unfortunately, only one set of children are dying. You know, more often than not. Um, so I understand the empathy and the understanding for the child that is bullying the perpetrator. Because most times, like we've said, the environment, like um, Helen said, has 90% to do mm -hmm. with, you know, child's mm -hmm. development or formation, you know, character, you know, you know, formation. I understand that. However, we must also understand that more often than not, while that child is you know, has issues. It's the child that's being bullied mm -hmm. that gets the wrong end of the stick more, more than not. That's a child that turns out sometimes a bigger bully mm -hmm. because they need to fight back. Sometimes that's a child that, ten, that turns up timid for the rest of their lives. Or dead. Or dead in some cases. Well, so, there's a case of the girl in the US, 12-year-old um, with autism, who committed suicide as a result of ongoing bullying. Yeah. She was being bullied so bad that she took her own life at the age of 12. Imagine that. What about the one that happened some months back in South Africa? A student killed herself because of bullying too. I don't mm -hmm. know that you follow that news. That yeah. was some months back in South mm -hmm. Africa. You see? See, I, I, I kind of think that, I mean, yes, I might try to take a slight outlier position, especially to Tolu's stance as to, yes, the bully, the bullied actually suffers some more. And yes, maybe apparently and obviously, the bullied may suffer some more. But then we do need to understand something that, in reality, when you start to delve deeper into behavioral patterns and working with children, every action has their psychological undertones to this. So, so you see, a person who is bullied, I'm not saying that, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not justifying because truly, I was not exactly a bully. I mean, I mean, are I, you I, sure? I, 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 I'm, I'm are you sure? You look sure. like a bully. I'm absolutely sure. No, I was just very. I was just one of those very. I was one of those very, was one of those very interesting. Well, you know, double personality. So I was mm -hmm. assertive, yet I was also very timid. Yeah. So I'm timid and I stay in my space. But you tug at, you push at me, I kind of assert myself. So I feel that we need to realize and deeply focus on the fact that there's a valid salient point that Elijah is raising. Mm -hmm. The bullied and the bully. But that brings me to something that somebody said when this conversation was going on. And that in a lot of schools, most schools have just, if you look at it, like 
one counselor. In fact, mm. the guidance and counseling system yes. in school mm. is even almost moribund. Most schools look at you know, intentionality is the last leg of this conversation. In fact, most schools focus on teacher certification, education, the principal, and things like that. Mm. But let's look at a step, taking this one step back when he was talking and we we're talking. I remember that a lot of our parents, or at least two generations mm -hmm. and the immediate past generation, had parents who. Whether or not we look at parenting, we talk about parenting, parent, intentional parenting is really important. But a lot of people that seem to have turned out okay in terms of they built a life, mm -hmm. where the school was really like, you know, where you had people who were in the system and they were saying, okay, you know what, this person is being sent to school and this was going on. So I feel that in this case, when Elijah was talking about how do you correct a failed system? Mm -hmm. The system is filled, right? Now we're talking mm -hmm. about the educational system. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in this situation here, little things like when they spoke about it, what kind of the undergirding of it, that behavior, those, those issues. It's a behavior. Now, yeah. What, 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 what is the cause? What is the cause of, that of it? Behavior? How do you deal with it? So okay. we have someone yes. here called Helen, yes. who is an advocate. Helen. And there's something <laughs> that happens, there's, there's, there's applied behavioral analysis in um, the special needs. Um, you know when we're do, thinking about special needs and you are working on behaviors of children and you try and find the cause of the root behavior aba abc mm -hmm. you know what happened before that behavior so you, mm -hmm. you immediately are looking for the root cause mm -hmm. the behavior that happened and then the consequence of that behavior mm -hmm. now we're dealing with the consequences of all these things mm -hmm. and we haven't dealt with the antecedent what is, we, the, what is the root cause mm -hmm. so is i think i think helen is is is, okay. is a really good one to just let's get her opinion on Yes. Uh, well, I guess now I'm talking from the point of a behavior analyst. So uh, yes, you have the antecedents, you have the behavior, you have the behavior. consequence. We are dealing with the consequence. That's what we seem to be doing here. But we need to look at what happened before. But as you were, you know, as you guys, as Elijah was talking, I said to myself, we have so many social workers who are redundant. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have so many counselors. Who are redundant? Mm -hmm. Why can't we have a system that every school mm, that's it. must have mm -hmm. one social worker Those are the challenges. and one guiding and counselor? Mm -hmm. And it will be done according to the population of the school. So mm -hmm. if your school is, yep. um, you have 1,000 children in your school, you would have at least two or three to service these children. This is what I feel should be the immediate stop gap. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to take a while mm -hmm. for us to get to where we're going. But as you rightfully said, those um, disciplines are totally non-existent in most of the schools. Why can't they? Why can't we advocate for them to come back? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Absolutely. So well, yeah. I'm going to tell you one, Helen. Yeah. Those that yes, those that are that think they are guardian and counselors needed to be guided and counselled. Those that teach needed to be taught. Mm -hmm. When I was in secondary school, I told you I went to a military school. That's why we had the soldiers. To instill discipline in us and sometimes punish us via the normal military means even lock you up in that room if need be mm -hmm. we had guidance and counseling most of the guy g and c were mostly women matured women mm -hmm. when i mean mature, i'm not talking of young teachers i mean women in their yeah. 50s yeah, times, when you yes. meet them like mommies they will mm -hmm. sit down with you like my son or my daughter they will advise you you know when i go to when i was in gs3 having passed through some nasty nonsense in school when I got to SS1, SS2, mm -hmm. and eventually I became a prefect, I remember I had a meeting with other prefects like myself. We said, this is our regime, will be different. We are not going to punish junior students. GS1 to GS3, we feel they are too small. We don't punish them. Mm. If you do wrong from SS1 to SS3, you'll be punished. So that idea of asking, hey, you, come and sweep our class, we don't do that. In fact, if any of our classmates does that, we disappoint. they don't like us for that. Like, but others said before us did it now. Why is your own case Why different? We said, no, ours will be different. <laughs> we like discipline, but not to beat or... Mm -hmm punish innocent children that's yeah. what i was thinking yeah so i, I so, and, and i understand that because sometimes again unless you can empathize with the, what mm -hmm. someone is going through no matter how many degrees or certifications you have mm -hmm. sometimes it's just education mm -hmm. sometimes all you need is just empathy mm -hmm. being able to understand what this person has been through i mean I'm, for a long time i was a bully for natural reasons i have four older brothers mm -hmm. right i was bullied all my life more or less but not so is the hurtful teaser did you say you but were? they knew well, not like all my life. Where? Thank God. Where? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I don't exactly. Know I'm, still, at my age, I'm still bullied by my older yeah. brothers because they I mean, they're way older than me. So you get those things, still bully you. But what it does for you sometimes is toughens you up, right? But in some other cases, you know, the negative, yeah. you know, uh, consequences of that. And you have to now personally check yourself mm -hmm. and see the tendencies mm -hmm. that you have. 
and then like you said go to the root cause and say where did this thing come from and then start to address those things well thank you very much everyone the question of the child rights plagues a lot of nigerians a little breaks it down after the break <laughs>